same thing with our next guest uh, would you please join me in welcoming mr. Brian McLaren hey everybody hello Great Brian hey Colby. oh my goodness how fun is this look at you with your guitars behind you <laughs> that's right I'd say quarantining's working out for you if you have all that to play with that's true I I, I wish uh, I, I've been waiting for a chance to be stuck at home so <laughs> Well, Brian, I before I played that video uh, with Glenn and I, I said, look, if, you, if you're if you here watching my thing, if you're familiar with any of my work, then you probably don't need me to introduce Glenn in. And I would say that is even more true, Brian, with you, if for no other reason than because when I was watching people say, you know, talk about the book on Clobber, and uh, I don't know if you remember this, but in, in that book, I talked about those early moments of my life when I began my shift, <laughs> when I began mm -hmm. sort of moving away from my conservative roots and it was your fault like you did it you you did that to me with your book a new kind of christian uh you opened up everything for me uh and so i i i attribute um yeah a lot of where i am today and who i am today to you brian so I really well, just brought you on here to butter your bread for 10 minutes that's all yeah uh, well that's kind of you to say and i should say um Colby, that I think your books are doing the same thing for so many people, yeah. and uh, that's that's exciting. It it feels like we're in a process that's going to take many generations, and um, you know, some of us uh, say, "Hey, this I smell smoke in the house here," and <laughs> others of us say, "Well, let's open a window," and others say, "Hey, it's getting worse. Let's open the door." And we each have a job to do in this process of helping people evacuate one place that's no longer hospitable uh dare to go out uh as glennon said let go of one trapeze yeah. and reach for the other yeah and then find that there actually is a, a wonderful home waiting for us that we never would have found if the one we were on hadn't caught on fire <laughs> wow <laughs> i love that well um brian as as uh, as you know i'm here talking about this new book the shift and uh, you know, part of why I wrote this, um, if you're just joining us on the Facebooks, my name's Colby, and this is a book release live stream extravaganza, and I'm here live with Brian McLaren. And part of why I wrote this, I talk about how it's not, it's not really a memoir, right? This isn't the story of me losing my faith. It's not, this isn't a book about deconstruction, how to tear apart things. It's not even really about reconstruction. I'm not, I'm not saying, and so now here, believe these things. A little mm -hmm. bit of all of that's sprinkled in, but mostly what this is, or what I tried to make it be, and I said this in my conversation with Glennon, is this kind of helping with this journey as people are moving along this spectrum, where they leave something more conservative and yes. find themselves towards something more progressive, which I know you've written a ton about, and you have experienced yourself and interacted with, at this point, I would say tens of thousands of people who have done similar journeys. I'm wondering, Brian, if you could share with us, in, from your experience of, of your shift, going back however many years ago you need to go back, mm -hmm. what, was, what was something that was challenging in that journey, in that navigating space for you? Gosh, Colby, there were so many things. I mean, I, I, I remember a dear friend of mine whose wife died suddenly, like she was totally healthy. We went to bed one night, she had a stroke. And she didn't wake up. And we were talking a few months later. And he said, Brian, it's not like I had my arm cut off. He said, it's like I had part of every single cell in my body torn out from me because she was part of everything. Well, that's, I think, how it is for us with our faith. You know, it's part of everything. Um, when I, I went through this shift in several stages, I really started as a teenager. And then I, I made sort of a few steps out of fundamentalism into maybe what we would have then called more progressive evangelicalism. And then some years later, I felt like the progressive evangelicalism I still wasn't 
I still needed more space. And, um, and, and at each of those stages, uh, I felt like my relationships with my family were going to get complicated. My relationship with my Christian community was really going to get complicated, including my mentors and my best friends. My relationship with my own kind of soul uh, was going to get complicated um, because I was going to have to embrace not knowing things where a huge part of my theology and my Christianity had been about knowing and getting clarity and this thing back then that we called the Christian worldview as if somebody had the only one. Um, uh, And then, of course, when I was a pastor, a complexity of it was that this is my job, too, and I was paid to have this stuff figured out. I was paid to know. I was paid to be certain. So you put all those things together. The challenge was that I had been such a fervent, good disciple of conservative evangelicalism uh, that now I was going to have to become bad at something I was good at (laughs) in order to start to become good at something that I didn't know yet. Wow. Wow. So I think you know this. I'm an Enneagram type three. If that was the way it was framed to me, I would, (laughs) I would never, (laughs) I'd never go. If I'm like, no, you have to be bad. It's like, um, but hearing you describe how the challenges were just layer upon layer and aspect upon aspect, like it it really, I, I was thinking about when I was trying to put together what I wanted to address in this book. I'm like, honestly, this is just part one. If this is a survival guide for this, this is just part one. Because there are myriad topics that I don't even have a chance to address. Um, Like you said, the challenges are just deep. But can I just say, you know, when I read your book, uh, Colby, I just thought you went to the heart of the critical issues. You did it in the minimum number of pages necessary (laughs) to really make the point. Like you didn't waste people's time. You, 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 it was practical, it was clear. Like I just thought, man, this is like a life, ra- a life ring throwing to somebody who's drowning. And I wish that I'd had this book when, uh, you know, when I was going through all this, I, I felt so alone. I felt like, uh, yeah, I didn't feel like there was anybody throwing me any life wraps. I felt like there was a bunch of people throwing me, you're going to hell. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank, thanks for saying that, Brian. Uh, I wonder if you would share on the flip side as you think back to your shift, because it's not all bad. <laughs> Nothing's all one thing or another. Uh, a lot of people who go through this shift also are experiencing, this is part of the confusing part, they're also simultaneously yeah. experiencing this liberation, this, yeah. um, this lightness, uh, this newfound curiosity that leads to uh, all sorts of... Uh, so tell us something about... As you remember going through your shift, what was one of the really beautiful things during that journey? Yes. Well, you know, uh, one of the things I hated most about my fundamentalist background is it put up a barrier between me and other people. Uh, Everybody I meet, I had this checklist. Is he saved? Is he (laughs) spirit-filled? Is he, you know, does he understand this doctrine? Like, I had this set of this grid that came between me and every other person. And it, and I, if I was going to be faithful, I had to make judgments about that person. And I had to put that person in a category, safe, dangerous, familiar, unfamiliar, one of us, one of them, open to you know my message, uh, not open. And one of the great liberations was, I mean, this sounds so obvious, but I met a person And this person was my neighbor. And all I had to do was love them, you know? It didn't matter who they were. It was like the the veil was torn away, not just between me and God. The veil between me and my neighbor was torn away so that I could encounter a person. And I I could just say, whoever you are, wherever you're coming from, here's what it was. It wasn't, I want to be your friend in spite of the fact that I'm a Christian and you're not. It was because of the kind of Christian I now am, I love you, of course, it doesn't yeah. matter. It, it's, yeah. it's unconditional, it's non-discriminatory. That was a huge liberation. Oh I my goodness, there are many, I many more. I love that. that. Was a- I love that, and, I, and it makes me, I, and people like your neighbor in that scenario prior to your shift, 
they feel that they feel that energy. They feel that sense of like, are, are you just building a relationship with me so that this can go ghost? Like they they pick up on that sort of conditional energy. Um, and so when, like you said, when it's not there, not only do you feel it, but I feel like other people get that as well. Like, oh, you're just a human. Like you're just another person. And you can suddenly have relationships in all new ways. Yes, it's really, really true. Uh, really true. And, um, uh, and that is liberating for the other person. It's liberating for me. Yeah. And I think in a way, it's liberating for the spirit in the sense that the love can just flow then. It doesn't have to, there aren't strings attached. It's not utilitarian. The love can just flow. And, and that feels so right, yeah. healthy. Yeah. Uh, Brian, this has been a real treat. Thank you for carving out some time. Um, before I let you go, uh, my wife Kate is fervently waving at you from off screen, sending all of her love. I love you toward you, you might have heard she loves you, Brian. Um, just give us one, la like for people who might be watching now or watching this later, if they're in the middle of the shift, I've seen some people share yeah. comments like uh, that they're feeling it now. What's just maybe one yeah. pastoral word you would say to them? Well, I'm not being cute here. The first thing I'd say is read Colby's book, okay? <laughs> um, but I'll tell you something I would say. I would say, Give yourself permission to see a distinction between God and your beliefs about God. Oof. In other words, these things have been completely fused in your mind. But give yourself permission to say, maybe God isn't exactly the same as my beliefs about God. Um, it, it, to use a biblical example, you remember uh, when uh, Paul speaks in Athens on Mars Hill, and he tells the people about an unknown God. Yeah. He's telling them, maybe the God that you don't know is better than the God that you know, or the gods that you know. And, and I would say to people, it may be that you think your beliefs are, are so great, but you're also having problems with them, your beliefs about God. If you're willing to trust God and not just your beliefs about God, you might get to, uh, uh, I think that will be your portal to uh, a better place. Does that make sense? A hundred percent, yes. And I think it's really imperative to, to, to even just experiment with that. I was talking to someone the other day and I'm like, what if people just gave themselves permission to just try something like that for a bit? You don't have to fully commit to it because it's terrifying at first, but just try experimenting. What would that be like to separate whatever the divine is from your beliefs about the divine that those might not be the same. Yes. Brian, thank you. Thank you for being on here tonight. Thank you for your kind words about the shift and, and my ministry. Um, you are wonderful. And people well, have been, you can watch this feedback later and see uh, the love that the folks are giving you. But uh, well, that's, and let me just say, uh, let me just say Colby that uh, you, this book is really going to help people. I mm. wish it weren't so needed. I wish it weren't so needed, but <laughs> it is so needed. Yeah. And I'm so grateful that you wrote it. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. Love you, buddy. You so that was Brian McLaren. How great was that? <laughs> I'm freaking out over here. <laughs> Having a moment. I just love that guy. Like, I don't even care that the graphics on the screen before I'm ready to talk about the giveaway. I'm just sort of basking in the joy that was talking to Brian. Uh, thank you so much for making time for us tonight. Okay, so we do now have uh, a, a giveaway to get to. And... Uh,